This six foot eight bodybuilder was the vampire king of 90s goth. But have allegations of racism and violence ruined his legacy? Type O negative frontman Peter Steele worked for the Brooklyn Parks Department while the band was in its early days. Some might think he'd have happily ditched that job for the prospect of living like a rock star, but he was reluctant to leave. According to a 1997 interview with Circus, he lived for being the guy who would tackle any task, from hauling massive amounts of trash down the highway to cleaning up bodily fluids. Former Type O drummer Sal Abruscato told Metal Geek that Peter's reluctance to leave his job caused fights in the band. A former boss also recalled that, even after he rose to be the king of goth metal, Steele would still swing by the parks department and make cracks about coming back if the band thing didn't work out. As if to prove the point, the song Black Number no. 1 was dreamed up as Steele drove a garbage truck. As he explained to Revolver, I was waiting in line for three hours to dump 40 cubic yards of human waste at the Hamilton Avenue Marine Transfer Station, and I wrote the song in my head. I'm not kidding you. Underneath his muscular 6'8 frame and vampiric image, Peter Steele was what the Aquarian called a diehard romantic, and in that same interview he admitted to them that he had always been very sensitive, in contrast to his intimidating physical appearance. He had no girlfriends in high school, and, like the vampire persona he would eventually embody, couldn't even stand his own reflection. I try to do something about my appearance because it needs a lot of work. When As Long As It's Black asked Steele why his lyrics can sometimes sound cruel, he confessed one woman's betrayal had scarred him so badly that he attempted suicide. Louder describes how most typo-negative songs are reminiscent of one type of heartbreak or another, starting with their first album, 1991's Slow, Deep, and Hard. This debut album contains the revenge anthem, unsuccessfully coping with the natural beauty of infidelity, written by Steele the night after an especially wrenching breakup. So why did Steele torture himself by playing songs that reminded him of heartbreak like this over and over? As he told As Long As It's Black, I am a masochist, I suppose. Slow, Deep, and Hard comes in roaring for vengeance, but even after the band had moved on to the sanguine melodies of Bloody Kisses and subsequent albums, the lyrics still referred to Peter Steele's personal life. He confided in Louder that he had a tendency to keep his problems buried until they finally erupted. Lyrical themes about love and loss still prevailed, but Steele said that the untimely death of his mother was probably the worst thing that ever happened to me. Her passing inspired most of Typo's final album, Dead Again, which featured songs like the mournful dirge, September Sun, and the supercharged and comical, Halloween in Heaven. Revolver argues that Steele's own misery was amplified in his songwriting, such as Black Number no. 1, Little Miss Scare All, which isn't about just any goth girl, though the lyrics sound as if they could be. According to Pitchfork, the woman described in the lyrics was the real-life girlfriend who drove him to attempt suicide. On a lighter note, the song Bloody Kisses is an ode to one of Steele's cats. It was by pure chance that Typo's vampire aesthetic coincided with the release of the film adaptation of Interview with a Vampire in 1994, a year after the band had released their third album, Bloody Kisses. Around that time, drummer Sal Abruscato told Metal Hammer magazine that the whole vampire allure connected with people, and the band soon started attracting a lot of female fans because of it. Of course, Steele's towering and muscular frame, as well as the sense of humor he blended into the menacing sound, didn't seem to hurt either. Steele was a dedicated weightlifter for the band's entire run, and his famous physique even landed him a cover feature in Playgirl in 1995. I did see your spread in Playgirl. You did? And there was quite did, did you um, get the uh, scratch and sniff one? The horror genre became a significant influence for Peter Steele, showing through his lyrics and artistic expression. The unofficial music video for Suspended in Dusk is actually remastered footage from the 1929 vampire movie Nosferatu, showing the creepy Count Orlok stalking his victims. In the song, Steele tells a story of a lonely immortal who can only watch his mortal lovers fade into death as he himself lives on. Other examples include Wolf Moon, where he howls about thirsting for human blood after dark, and vampire-themed tracks such as Love You to Death and Die With Me. Peter Steele was a heavy drinker who became addicted to cocaine later in the band's run. As he explained to Louder, I tried to mask the pain by drowning myself in cocaine and alcohol until I thought I was the Pope. The drug abuse drove Steele to paranoia, and in 2005 he overdosed and landed in a psychiatric institution. 
As the singer admitted to MK Magazine, he was constantly on law enforcement's radar because of drug misuse, was reluctant to drag himself to parole appointments, and had to be hauled away to jail after a series of interventions. In an interview with Louder, however, Steele admitted that he didn't get addicted to cocaine until the somewhat late age of 35. Peter Steele was no stranger to handcuffs, and had a rap sheet to match his rock star status. Aside from narcotics, there were other shenanigans that had him repeatedly butting heads with the law. In an interview with GNR Central, Steele described time served at New York's infamous Rikers Island for charges including attempted murder. According to Steele, he had tried to kill an ex-girlfriend's partner while high on drugs. Whatever the truth of the matter, assault was the charge that actually appeared on Steele's record. While in prison, as Steele told MK Magazine, it wasn't the jeers of Undertaker and Tarzan that got under his skin the most, as inmates mocked his unconventional appearance. Other prisoners tried to pick fights with the sensitive giant. Worst of all, though, was being in prison when his mother died. Possibly one of the most bizarre accounts of Steele's erratic behavior came in 2009, the year before his death. According to NBC Bay Area, he was charged with several crimes, both felonies and misdemeanors, including police evasion, vandalism, and even indecent exposure, after ringing neighbors' doorbells naked and then running from the cops who chased him. With Steele having already racked up prior offenses, the third case violation that came with Steele's ding-dong ditch spree meant he would face the possibility of life imprisonment. During the making of 1999's World Coming Down, Typo's drummer Johnny Kelly admitted that he feared the singer had plunged too deep into his vices, telling Louder, Peter wasn't in top form. Drugs had started to get in the way of things. It came to the point that Peter Steele had no desire to perform. As Kelly told Billboard in another interview, the singer's desire to live became questionable. He said, You get to that perspective of, is he going to make it? That you can't plan anything a year from now. Guitarist Kenny Hickey told Kerrang! that the song I Don't Wanna Be Me was an outpouring of Steele's frustration over his addictions and the adverse effects on his health. Steele's arrests and the time he did in both jail and rehab were not easy on the band. Hickey also told Kerrang! that he thought Steele had tired of touring. Steele had intermittent periods of sobriety, but as he told MK Magazine, when his addiction called, he would answer. You know, you're a little depressed, right? Sometimes. Have you gone to a psychiatrist for this problem? Yeah, but he told me I was crazy. He told me to get out. Peter Steele's self-hatred was burning inside his massive chest years before Typo Negative even existed. He told the Aquarian that he had been an abnormally tall kid, teased for his size, and he felt helpless when bullies hounded him. He said, I was big, but I didn't know how to fight back. The singer would go on to experience a massive growth spurt in high school, but it still didn't make him popular with the girls. It was only after Bloody Kisses was released that female groupies swarmed the stage, and Steele didn't mind the attention, as he admitted to Jerry Springer in a live appearance on his famous show. Kenny Hickey later told Kerrang! that Steele's health had begun to deteriorate by the mid-2000s. As Hickey put it, he was getting sick of addictions and sick of life. He didn't want to be Pete anymore. Louder notes that Type O had to cancel their 2004 tour because of Steele's health issues, though he seemed to reanimate in 2005, not knowing he had less than five years left to live. Over the years, Typo was blasted with accusations for many of their lyrics, including charges of racism, sexism, fascism, and even anti-Semitism. The band were sometimes branded as neo-Nazis, despite guitarist Josh Silver being Jewish. A 1997 article in Penn State University's newspaper, The Collegian, tried to get a campus show canceled by calling attention to songs like Der Untermensch, a German language title which means the subhuman, a term taken directly from Nazi philosophy. It didn't help that the lyrics slammed welfare, tax evaders, and some thought, immigrants. If a person chooses not to work, that's fine. But don't go in and, you know, collect benefits. For its part, Type O didn't want to be associated with Nazi ideology. Kenny Hickey backpedaled when interviewed by the college paper, and then executive vice president of Roadrunner Records, Doug Keough, told Blabbermouth that Steele himself had grown up in an immigrant family. Steele biographer Jeff Wagner explained to Vice that the singer was more of what we might call today an edgelord who whipped controversy into media attention. He assured readers that Steele was neither racist nor sexist at heart. Listeners have varying opinions on the matter to this day. According to Loudwire, Peter Steele had been aware of his irregular heartbeat from early childhood, caused by atrial fibrillation, and his bandmates were also aware of his condition. Several male relatives had died of heart issues before age 50, but none had abused drugs like Peter had while on medication for the condition. 
On the one hand, the typo singer typically maintained a physique as famous as his towering height. Steele, however, was prone to binge consumption. Kenny Hickey told KBAT, women, food, alcohol, he had to have mass quantities. He dreaded running out of anything. He's the only guy I know who could do two eight balls and eat $60 of Chinese food. The cause of Steele's death was initially thought to have been an aortic aneurysm. An autopsy later discovered that a bout of diverticulitis had actually caused his demise. Sadly, the surviving members of Typo Negative reported on their website that Steele had been attending to his health in a new way in the months prior to his passing. Peter had been enjoying a long period of sobriety and improved health, and was imminently due to begin writing and recording new music for our follow-up to Dead Again. Type O Negative broke up forever when their frontman died. No fights triggered it. There was just nobody else who could even walk in Peter Steele's combat boots, let alone replace him. Steele's hulking figure left a massive void. Drummer Johnny Kelly told Billboard that while they knew Steele had been through the ringer with his health, they had planned to start recording soon and were unprepared for the phone call from Peter's sister. It was as if he had suddenly vanished. The band's final show had been on Halloween 2009, fitting for a man who created art that combines spooky camp and actual menace. Kelly and Kenny Hickey would go on to play in Silver Tomb, while Josh Silver left the metal scene entirely and became a paramedic. Hickey is, at the time of this video's release, the vocalist and guitarist for Silver Tomb. But Type O will always be in his blood, and so will Steel. As he said on their website, part of me died with him. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please dial or text 988 to speak with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. You can also seek help by visiting 988lifeline.org.